Hi, so here's another uh, Blender hidden feature. This is another one of the add-ons, and if you go to Preferences, it's this one called Add Mesh Ant Landscape, and there's documentation there. There's limited documentation. Um, a lot of the features, uh, and, and you'll see there's a lot of buttons to push. A lot of it's uh, just kind of undocumented. <laughs> um, so if you turn it on, it, there are two places you can get to it. You can get to it through the Add Mesh menu or over there on the sidebar. And you can see the sidebar actually has all the same information that you can adjust in that panel. So if the panel goes away, just go to the sidebar for that landscape and you can make the same adjustments. It's all there. You just need to click the refresh and it'll refresh the landscape that you're looking at. So here you can adjust like the resolution of it, number of subdivisions. You can see it's a little more detailed there. And let me turn on the screencast so you can see what I'm doing. There's a lot of noise uh, variations you can make within the tool. If you go here, you can select all sorts of different types of noise. Boy, there's quite a variety. Not only the noise type, but the noise basis. And you can see the blender's the default there. But there's, again, uh, you know, the Perlin and Voronoi and all sorts of variations there. So it's kind of, you can adjust it until you get something that you like, but there's so much, there's so many things you can, you can vary that, um, really the options are kind of limitless. You can change the random seed here and then there's offsets. You can move the noise around and you know, offset and X offset and Y and then the size and X and Y as well. And then the noise size. And these are some of the same options you have in, in, in like the shader or the texture. You can adjust, you know, the patterns that you're you're using for, uh, you know, either those uh, textures or uh, the noise in, in the shading. Now here you can change the depth and some other of the noise settings there. The effect type is <clears throat> and I apologize some of the there's a bit of a, a bit of lag now that I turned on the screencast keys. I think I might turn that off this effect or effect type is sort of another pattern that is putting on top of the noise that you define above. So you can give it a bump or a zigzag and it kind of mixes those together and you can change how it's mixed together. Again, you can give it offsets and change its size and intensity. just so we get back to our original hill. Now this strata is kind of interesting. If you do it, you can you can see it kind of separates it into a bunch of different layers and here the default is on five. I guess it looks good if you're making like a Western scene if you or if you're um, making a quarry or something like that and want those kind of levels in your in your mountain. And you can change the amount. I don't know why it just doesn't jump to an integer value, but uh, you can change it. Here I changed it to 2 and then back to 5, the default. And then also you can add a water plane, and then you can change the level that the water's at. So you can make it into an island if you want, or a lake depending on what it looks like. Now, uh, if you go to the top, uh, there's presets, and boy, there's a bunch of them in here. 
I'll show you a couple of them. Canyons is kind of interesting. Uh, let's see the dunes. If you have a desert scene, Mesa. And down here they have some lakes with a water plane in there already. So there's a bunch here. Uh, there's planet noise. And then uh, let's see. Let's try this one, the volcano. And I didn't show you this before. There's a button up here at the top called Sphere. And if you click it, it actually makes it, it's kind of like the rock generator, right? Um, I have another video on uh, the rock generator and uh, that's under the mesh uh, extra objects. Uh, and you can get rid of, you have that little uh, discontinuity if you click remove doubles it takes care of that so that's an easy way to make like an asteroid or rock or whatever you can you could make it here and then kind of deform it to whatever shape you want so I'll take it back to the default So if you're shading, a lot of videos you'll see, they go to the shading and they want to make it so that you have, say, grass on the flatter areas and then the steeper areas, you have some um, more of a rock uh, material there. So in a lot of videos you'll see they get a couple of image textures and they want to mix them based on the normal. Um, so here I have one that's a grass texture and another uh, principal BSDF that's a rocky texture and okay it's lagging a little too much so I'm going to take off the screencast keys and yeah there it goes much better. And what they do they mix the shaders and they use a the f for the fact in the, the factor in that mix shader they read in the normal of the geometry into a separate xyz and they take the z component and use that as you know through a you can put that through a, a color ramp and make some adjustments and then put that into the factor. And if I put a color ramp on there, I can adjust it. And you can see, okay, I'm kind of separating out the steeper areas. So we could use that as kind of a mix between the two. So if I do control shift and right mouse drag between those two principled uh, BSDF shaders, it's going to make a mix shader, and if I put the color ramp into the factor, and let me switch those two around, make some adjustments to the color ramp, you can see that the rock is really only in that those steeper areas. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is just go over here and click this weight from slope that's in the landscape uh, tools over there and it'll give you this map and it shows up as a weight paint but there's a quick way you can get this actually into something you can use in a shader. Uh, the shader doesn't have a vertex group but it does have a color attribute and there are some tools within Blender that can allow you to use this color attribute. So here you see, okay, up, up there on top, there's vertex groups, and the slope is in there. That's what we're looking at right now. If we add, a, let's call it color slope. Maybe put a dot there. And then if we go over to vertex paint, in the paint menu, there's this vertex color from weight. So you click on that and it writes out that 
that weight paint information to this color attribute. So here I'm showing you, if I put a color ramp through the same color ramp through that, and then I take a look at each of them, boy, they're pretty close to the same, aren't they? Okay, so all of this is stuff that you normally see in a video about this, but the thing that, well, I would consider kind of the hidden feature, um, the thing that's not really discussed is this landscape eroder. And there's some really interesting effects you can get by using that. So I'll go back to this view and click the landscape eroder. And there's a bunch of things you can vary the carrying capacity of the uh, the sediment, the uh, deposition rate, rain amount, and all that. And you can see as I increase the the repetitions, the the number of times that it's iterating, it's eating into the the mountain a little bit. And the more iterations you do, of course, the more um, time it takes. And I think 20 is a bit too much. Uh, go down back to 10. And you can see I have some grooves kind of eaten into the, into the mountain that I made. There's one. And then if I increase it to 10, you can see, oh, yeah, there's some areas there that have um, been eroded away. And you can play with some of these values, see how it affects it. And But the interesting thing about this is it gives you a lot of weight paint data depending on all of these uh, erosion values. So look at this. All of a sudden we have a rain map, a scree, uh, avalanche, uh, water, scour. And these are all weight paints. And that seems to show you where the deep cavities are that seems kind of similar water is giving you kind of you know where water would be flowing scour again seems to look in the cavities kind of similar to scree i guess and then there's flow rate and sediment and yeah, you can get these kind of weight paints out there. And just like we did before, you can go into the vertex paint and change these into color attributes. And then it's the same as we did before. You go to vertex paint, and if I'm selected the slope and the color attribute and I go vertex color from weight paint it's going to write that and if I do the same for the flow rate it's going to write that out you can see it's a little different mapping and then if I do the same for sediment there you go and then finally from water I don't know which one I'm going to use really but I just wanted to have them all available really some of them kind of look very similar So then with that color attribute node, you can read these in and use them as factors in your shader. So if I go ahead and go back to my, my shading and I read in one, I can go ahead and choose the sediment and then put that into a color ramp. And then use that as a factor between this fine, this this rocky side of the mountain that I want, and this finer kind of sediment that I kind of look that I want. And then down here I have a grassy material. If I want to mix those two, I'm going to use a, a different color map there, the color attribute I mean. So for that color attribute, I'm going to read in 
think this slope might work here. And so I'm reading in a different color attribute and kind of changing the color ramp until I kind of get those in kind of the the flatter areas. And it's mixing them all. And you can play around with the the scale so you don't like get some obvious tiling or anything like that. And you can change how it's blend. If you change it to box uh on the the image, you can kind of blend uh between the images so it doesn't it doesn't have like a really sharp discontinuity there. So there you go. Um, and you can also add some bump. Here I've gone in and added bump to, to, to each of them just so um, I get some And here on each of them I've added some bump just to get me some extra kind of depth to the to the texture and then I gave it a sun and then I used the dynamic sky to give it a background I really didn't like that so then I went back to um, just putting in an HDRI and if you want some of these lighting tricks you can go ahead and look at one of my other videos on lighting Actually, there's two. I had an addendum that includes the dynamic sky. But there it is. Uh, printed it out. Uh, go, went, went ahead and rendered it. And, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but uh, it gives you an idea of how you can use those textures to go ahead and blend a bunch of different uh, images that you can use as your textures. So that's about it. If you like the video, please click like or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.